Yeah, let me know if there's anything you don't want to talk about or or whatever. No, man, I'm, I'm an open book. Yeah, I, I, like I, I'm I'm good. Ask me whatever you want, and like I, I'm I'm I'll probably tell you some shit that you didn't even know. Let me know if it's like redundant or something like that, and then we can uh, we can you move know, on because I I don't want it to be one of those things where you're like regurgitating the same fucking story. Yeah, you know, over, you know, people. Pe- I mean, I gotta talk about Gaga in a certain per, for a certain amount of time, just because that's like such a big part of my that's fucking quarter of my whole life, you know. Right. But like, don't ask how I met her or whatever, because fucking hey, man, you can Google that and it's some got me somewhere. You know what I mean? Yo, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So Jamie, you can't ask your question on how he met Gaga. I did. Fuck it. Hi. No, you can't. You can't. You, was that? Was that? Was yeah, that you just Google it. Man. <laughs> just Google it. No, that was, was not that my it? question. No, no, no. That was the that was the one question he had. So you can log. That off. was the one I was. Yeah. All right. You can log <laughs> off. You can log off of Zoom now. Yeah. You can right. get off. You can get Please off now. Me. All right. Um. So I guess we're gonna just start this. Hey, yo, what's right. good? Oh, hey, yo, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do to Gaga in the studio, White Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing bows over here. Oh, yeah. fucking shit. <laughs> Trying to have a serious moment over here. All right. Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the world podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We have DJ Never here. Yo, what's up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. DJ D Miles is MIA. He is getting his knee fixed. He's not getting his ass fixed. <laughs> He's getting his knee fixed. I also got to send uh, a lot of love and light to our homie and the DJ community, DJ Audio One. Yeah. Who's man. recovering from a stroke right now. And uh, just send him a lot of love and light and, um, you know, tweet at him, Instagram him. And um, there is a PayPal. That you can send any type of dough, two dollars, twenty dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever the fuck you can. Anything helps. We want to buy his swag, buy his merch. Yeah. Also, we want to make sure that he's not worried about expenses while he's still in the hospital recovering from a stroke. So we want to make sure he's not worried about any expenses while he's in there and he's just focusing on his health. So that PayPal is uh, DJ Audio One. You can just send it to him, right? Um, Yeah. Number one at the end. Yeah. With a number one, and uh, yo, Audio One, we love you, man. Yeah, we, man. Get better. But uh, back to the episode, we got a special guest over here. Um, he reps Detroit, Chicago. He's a DJ, writer, producer for Lady Gaga. He's a Grammy Award winner. Um, yo, we got White Shadow in the building. White Shadow, what's up? What's good, yeah, man? What's up? Hey, guys. What's, what's good, man? Building, man. <laughs> so we got to get this question out of the way. Uh, how did you meet Gaga? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, anyway, shit. man, that was the million the, dollar question. No, the no. question I just wanted to know. That's probably the I'm one. Gonna get, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. Post Malone tattoo that on my face. Don't don't ask me how I met Lady Gaga. Put it underneath my eye, like whatever the fuck. It is. That's the one question he told us. He's like, yo, I just don't want to answer well, you know, how I met No, you. I didn't say it like that, though. I didn't say it. You want to stay for me topics? Yeah. I said, no, I said, like, yo, you can ask me whatever the fuck you want. I said, but everybody asked me how I met Lady Gaga. Yeah. So, I mean, that's probably out there on Google. That's what I said. But ask away. Ask away. Oh, well, but, it? I don't but, give a fuck. I know. Actually, I wanted to do this interview a little bit in Japanese, you know? Konnichiwa. Ah, konnichiwa. 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 Are you fluent still? Uh, you know what that uh, means? Oh, he curses uh, out. He curses <laughs> out. <laughs> Fuck so y'all, motherfuckers. motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no. It translated to you met Gaga where? What did, it, what did that translate yeah, right. to? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I actually asked you to lick my balls very politely. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Arigato. 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can do I can do the fake Japanese thing. I can do like I can make a good thing. Can you do that? Is, can you do that in twenty twenty one? That's something that's acceptable. I mean, I'm, I I'm Asian, so I can so I can get away with it. I don't know about us, but I can shit I can shit on other Asians. You guys can actually shit on other Asians as well if there's an Asian present. So you have <laughs> Yeah, as long as I approve of the shitting on. And I'm in we the building, the, we right? We got the stamp. We got yeah. the stamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at White Shadow. <laughs> sell, sell that on eBay. Cro- yeah. Crooked's approval. This yeah. shit on Asian. If, if there's an Asian... Yeah. If there's an Asian in the building, and if there's a Latino in the building, or Latinx in the building, stamp. you can you stamp, stamp on it. But by no means can you shit on anything black. 
That's pretty you much know, it, right? You, you, you want to know the <laughs> truth? Do that. I, I, I only shit on white people. So maybe it's like a thing that like whatever. I don't, I don't <laughs> ever find myself wanting to shit on Asians and black people or Latinos. It's always white people that I want to shit on. But that's the so wave right now. That's the wave. It's white people shit. It's been, my, it's been my wave since I was like two. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 I've been on that wave. Any white person who's shitting on other white people is like they popping right now. Like everyone yeah. loves really? them. Yeah, yeah. That's the wave right yeah. now. I mean, but that's, that's been a thing for Detroit motherfuckers. Look at Eminem. He's shit on his mom the whole time. Yeah, like, just I, blew I the fuck up. Think, yeah, self deprecation is just like a fucking Jewish <laughs> thing. Maybe I don't know, but like it, you know, at the end of the day, I find myself saying "fucking white people" like so many times a day, like just because white people fucking suck right now, and they sucked like years ago. I think I was just early on the way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, so I know White Shadow very briefly. Like we've known of each other. I don't know yeah. if we have many stories of hanging out together, but. We, Sean we, Perry introduced us. Right. And we were, we yeah. were, Leo, shout to Sean Perry. That's, that's the big homie right there. So, yeah. We were always in the same circle. So, there was uh, your name, White Shadow, when we were like <clears throat> up and coming DJs in the 2000s, right? Mid 2000s. Yeah. We were all in the same circle. And I remember you were part of one of the early DJ management agencies, which was Koi Pond. Do you remember that? Yeah. It yeah, was Koi. I remember it. it was the Stone Rock and Graham. DJ agency, and then there was Cheap Shot, Sean Perry, and Evil, Evil One. One. Yeah, Evil One. Everyone was in that same circle, and that's how we knew each other. And there weren't many DJ agencies at all. I think maybe the other one was Scam, and I think I had my own independent manager at the time. And it was like the beginning of everyone just going out of town. It was like a weird, it was like a yeah. weird early process, right? Yeah. LV asked to manage me for a minute, and then. You know, I was running, like, everybody had their kind of, like, corner of, of the states, you know what I mean? So, like, I was, like, posted up in Chicago, and there wasn't really anybody else posted in Chicago. So, mm -hmm. we, we were having people from L.A. and New York come in, and, like, that's how we were meeting people. And so, it was, it was like a tip or tap back then, because it was kind of like the wave had just picked up, like, for tra open format traveling DJs, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so, because of AM, to be honest with you, AM was, like, open that door back up for everybody so like i put stone and graham at the places in chicago that i go out to area and do shit for them and i played a marquee with sean so it was like you're just building a network of places you could go and shake hands with motherfuckers and do business on other in other parts of the country you know yeah but i will say to this day i think the midwest was the most lucrative for everybody i go mm -hmm. to new york and it'd be like yo we're gonna break you off 500 dollars i'd be like yeah. all right cool and then they come to Chicago. I'd be like, I'd be like, how much did they give you? They'd be like forty five hundred bucks. I'd be like, what? Yeah, it was it was, it was crazy. crazy. No one was yeah. really making money on the coast, but there was this mm -hmm. illusion that if you if you hired a New York DJ or an LA DJ in the Midwest, it was like some superstardom shit where you're getting like a big yeah. city DJ in Chicago or a big city DJ in Milwaukee or Kansas City. You know what I mean? It was like this yeah. this whole aura and. And everything. Yeah, because because at the time it was like, and and I'll tell you two seconds of a story after that. But like, you know, you'd end up in like like a do or something like that. And Britney Spears would be in the in the DJ booth, and it would be like Stone Rock with with Britney Spears. And then I'll, every Midwestern girl who wanted to meet Britney Spears, like they couldn't buy the ticket for that show, would buy a ticket for the Stone Rock show. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, yeah, yeah. So I was like that. So it was like the the way the clubs could introduce that that idea of this celebrity person in, in the in the booth so that was it, it but was, I, I told every i told everybody i moved to to la like after i did that deal with stone and graham i just told everybody i moved to la and up my fees in chicago because i was like fuck it these dudes are doubling what i make and fuck these motherfuckers i'm as good as they are so i'm just gonna tell everybody i'm from la now and be a superstar dj open up for stone it was it was definitely the page six people magazine era right like every like mm -hmm. that was like there wasn't there wasn't really social media so then djs were did you actually were you one of the djs who got a publicist because i know there was there was like the emerging thing of djs getting publicists just to know but you know no but you know um fuck, what was her name the girl who ran um koi for for stone and Tao, Tao, right Tao, oh, yeah 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 um and she she worked for playboy for years so she kind of had a a little bit of a uh, inside run. I didn't know what a publicist was, dude. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm from the Midwest. I had no fucking idea what that shit was. I mean, so it was like, yeah. yeah, she did most of that. But like, it, it worked. I mean, we got places, did shit, you know, yeah. good group of guys. 
minus Sean Perry, but everybody else was good. <laughs> Sean Perry. Come on. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Shout out to Sean. You, <laughs> wait, are you, you and Sean are cool, right? You and Sean Perry are cool? I love Sean. Yeah, yeah okay, I'm okay. Just, I'm just fucking with I didn't know, I didn't know if there was any beef. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, are they beefing? I don't know. No, I, don't, I mean, I don't have any beef with anybody that I know of at yeah, this yeah. point. Yeah. It, it's funny because when I when I when I heard about you kind of popping off, like, so I've always known about you, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're like, oh, White Shadow's going on tour with Lady Gaga. He met her at Hyde, you know. Uh, I think his his uh, Lady Gaga's music director. I think Matthew yeah. Williams met up with you. I probably heard you at Hyde. Loved your set. You guys talked and chatted it up, and then you know you got invited. So this is this is the outside perception. Maybe behind yeah. your back, because you know, you know, DJs are, are gossip whores, right? Sure. And, yeah. and DJs are like the biggest like shit talkers, and they they're the biggest haters too. At the same time, it's almost like yeah. the, it's almost like the comedy world where like, you know, all the comedians, it's like a really tight community. But when yeah. when one person blows up, everyone kind of hates on that dude, and they're like, "Well, why did he blow up?" You know what I mean? So, yeah. So when all of this shit happened with you, I didn't know you that well. So I wasn't connected yeah. to you. Like, I didn't feel any type of way about you, you know, your success or your failing or anything. I was just like, you know, he's he's tight with a bunch of homies. Good for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I was busy in Vegas doing other shit. And I was like, yo, good for him. That shit sounds dope. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I, I remember a lot of DJs hating on you and just kind of making it seem like, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, well, what's the problem? They're like, well, he's doing this. And it was all these rumors surfaced. Did you, did, were you aware of any of that shit or not at all? I, you know, honestly, for, I don't give a fuck, number one. Nice. But, but, you know, <laughs> Bro, that Gaga money was too loud, baby. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> It, I at love the end it. Of the day, it wasn't. It wasn't so much that. It, at the end of the day, I think that like anytime like you get that vibe, and and I'm not saying that because I'm unaware of it. I got the vibe too. Like I, I get the vibe too. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's yeah. like other producers that are fucking 16 years old that bang out Fruity Loops for two minutes and all of a sudden have four number one hits. I'm like, yo, fuck that dude. But that's just that. That's nature, bro. Right. It's like normal <laughs> shit. But I don't really mean like fuck that dude. I'm like fuck that dude. Like I wish I was that dude. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. like normal whatever so for sure bro like i mean like people are like how the fuck did he pull that off and like here it wasn't what i did then right that those two weeks that one meeting motherfucker i've been doing this shit for 15 years i haven't fallen off so like mm -hmm. i did i'm doing something right i worked right. to get that at point and i'm still working you know what i mean like yeah, so yeah. it's like if i, if I would have done that one thing and then next year been fucking digging ditches or some shit like then everybody has a right to be like yo fuck that dude but like didn't I, I've been I've been holding on to the rope for a while now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's like I work really hard. That's how I got there. So if they had a fuck you for me then, come come find me now. Let's talk about it. They, I like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I yeah. love it. I like that energy. I like that energy. Love that energy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially where he's at right now. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be hard for you to get to him. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's funny because at the time when it was happening, they you know, I'd have these DJs and they, and then some of them are homies and some of them I didn't really know. You know, sure. we, cause you know, remember, you know, the, the culture back then we would, we would DJ, I'd go out of town, we DJ, we'd get kind of, we'd get tipsy, we'd all go out to eat afterwards and then, yeah. and then all of a sudden a sewing circle would start, right? Yo, yeah, did you yeah, hear sure. about White Shadow? Did you hear about this? Yeah. Did you hear about that? And at the time, can I, can I, can I tell you some of the rumors? I go, like listed. Go. <laughs> Go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, bro. Right and, you, and you can tell them if they're if they're true or false, okay? Yeah. Um, one of them was that you were fucking Gaga. You were her side dude or some shit. Okay. <laughs> I heard that rumor also. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear about that one. I heard about that one. Which 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 is not a bad rumor. <laughs> I was gonna say that's, 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 that's a remarkable that's a rumor. That is a tight rumor. Yeah, yeah. Uh I don't know whether to kill that or to let it live, but right. I, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh She's who I, that she's like my sister. I swear to God, Crooked, I'd fuck you before I fuck that girl. Like, like, I, hey, you <laughs> have a chance, Crooked. <laughs> not, not, not because uh, not because I don't find her like to be attractive, but like we we when you when you bond with somebody over like the creation of some shit like that, and yeah. like it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, like it's it's just a different it's a different kind of relationship, and you know. On, on on my children's eyes, I'm like we've never had any kind of like sexual back and forth yeah. ever ever. 
Uh, I think for the first six months, you probably thought I was gay like everybody does because I fucking wear pink and I talk shit about dicks all the time. But um, uh, That's a lot of DJs. Yeah. And especially if you're hanging around with Stone That's Rock. That's a lot of DJs. Yeah. Especially if, yeah. if, you're around, around. if you're hanging <laughs> around. If you're hanging around with Stone Rock and Graham, there's going to be a lot of talk about dicks yeah, and all that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah there you that go. Was part that, of the initiation. That, was, that was the initiation. That was the initiation you got to about. Like, I'm sure you, oh, all no. you guys have saw, seen each other naked at some point. I'm sure like you guys have all done that shit. You know. I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure too. I don't remember it, but there's a lot of <laughs> shit I don't remember. You know? um, but yeah, no, never, never, never had a sexual relationship. With okay, Gaga. you're the you're the first person that's ever asked me that. So uh, yeah, I good, know. Good question. This is a very yeah, prof- this it. is a very professional podcast. <laughs> go, baby, go. Keep them coming. <laughs> so the other rumor was that you were you um you were stealing DJs mixes or like beats or ideas, and then you kind of shopped them to Gaga. And then they were like, yo, that's, and that was the really big rumor that everyone was saying, and you were taking from other DJs, you know? Um, I, I don't know who that would have been because at the point of jumping off, yeah, I, you know, I don't even know if I knew any other DJs that were making beats at the particular time that I, that I popped, like I had been fucking making tracks forever and, and, and. I had been submitting stuff forever. When I met her, I had like a couple remixes in the can. Like I did some shit for Estelle and some other stuff, like nothing Mm -hmm. that big. But I've been making techno since I was fucking 17. Like that's how I started. Yeah. So like I was pretty well versed in production and it was something that I did on the side. But back then there were no like big DJ producers to like mentor yourself after. So like I had a vault of shit that I had just made that like I kind of like did for shits and giggles like i had ableton 3 you know what i'm saying like yeah. I, I sold my box for ableton 3 so i've been on it like it wasn't my main source of income but it was something that i enjoyed doing and so i sent records to every person that i could but you know a lot of times that shit falls on deaf ears um i don't know how stealing a dj's mix would have got me in with that or woman, just like but- you, know, you know like these random ideas that muff like these mix ideas or like wordplay shits or blends or you know, hey, like all that stuff, you know, you know? like little I, I things, guess, you know, I mean, they're little, guess, but you know, you know how it is, right? Yeah, 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 sure. And and here's, and here's, here's how that goes for me. It's um, like, it's like, a, like stealing a, a joke from a, a comedian. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, su- I suppose. Um, but you know what? Go fuck yourself. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to hear this in any I, other I, podcast. I, yeah. Honestly, like I have no idea. Like I, I don't know what I could have taken. Right. And, and if I could, mm-hmm. if I could think of like a specific thing to defend myself against or at least answer to, then yeah. But I mean, I have, I have the 20 beats that I, that I sent her for the first pack that they asked me for. I still have it. And I yeah. don't, I don't know who I would have taken shit from, but it's possible fuck it you know i don't know but uh, it's just dj's hating on you that was all man yeah no like listen like i I would love to uh i would love to talk to that person now and and have a one-on-one maybe i maybe i owe him a check but probably not i mean i think it was just like it was just it became rumor after a while there were like motherfuckers who didn't even know you that were talking about it to me and i'm like how do you know this and they're like well i talked to this guy who talked to that guy dude he probably like did the same mix of somebody else's mix and that became yo he stole somebody's production right right, right, i don't don't know by word of mouth by the end of the day it just got to 30 people and by that time it became a whole other rumor Mm -hmm. yeah and that's i mean yeah like like i said dog like it's like it probably to the outside looking in you know, it's like anything else, man. There's been a lot of DJs that have turned up and it, a lot of engineers, you know what I mean, that have like turned into producers and a lot of different ways to get up. And I suppose it's easier to say, oh, that motherfucker did this. or Oh, he's fucking her. Or, oh, he, he's got a rich daddy or, oh, you know, whatever it is. Um, none of which are true. Mm-hmm. But that's probably an easier way to explain it than, than that dude's fucking on the grind 24-7 and, and I'm not. You know what I mean? Like one right. of those is an easier explanation. <laughs> so it's like for me, it's like, well, whatever. I, if you've got something specific that, that like you want to talk about, then uh, I'll gladly give you my email address. DM, DM me up. You know? Do, do you? I mean, how do you feel? Like, do you feel like? Do you think? Do you feel like there's been a support system between you and DJs? As you know, as you when you kind of started working with Gaga and you blew up 
and you know I heard you got like a two million dollar check, but it, you and you were grinding on your way to that two million dollar check when you first produced. Uh, well, I, let's 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 put some background to this, you know. And yeah. I, I've, I know you've heard this before, so I'm yeah. gonna, I'm going to go through this as fast as I can, you know. So okay. basically, you end up going on tour with Gaga, right? Uh, she, yeah. she needed someone to kind of DJ and, and uh, in between sets and, and, and whatnot, right? You did that for two years? No, 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 no. Let me back up a little bit first. Okay. So, so when, I was in, when I was in college, I used to DJ parties like everybody else, right? You go, right. you fuck, you throw parties, blah, blah, blah. I turned my DJ, DJing parties in college to, to a club night that I used to run 2,000 people through the door every Thursday night in college, 2,000 people every Thursday night, mm -hmm. $20 a head for the dudes and ladies for free, right? right? I took all that money and I owned a nightclub in Kalamazoo, Michigan when I was 23 years old. I took that money and moved to Chicago and bought not one, but two clubs, two fucking clubs in Chicago that I owned all by myself. One of them I bought for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. The other one I bought for two hundred thousand dollars. And when I got out of them, I sold the one for one twenty-five for almost a million dollars. And I sold the other one for fucking a hundred thousand dollars over, and only because I had just bought it. And so when I started making music again, started DJing again, I already had money in the bank because I fucking busted my dick for for ten years before that. I was grinding, mm -hmm. so it's like I was I was comfortable enough. To go back to DJing because I had a nest egg because there was a moment in that in that zone where you couldn't make more than three hundred four hundred dollars a night DJing right, right? right unless you were unless you were like some fucking Tiesto or, or Carl Cox motherfucker mm -hmm. so it was like for me I was an open format guy and there wasn't that much money in it so I was hustling you know what I'm saying so it's like finding that point when I went back to DJing I already had a solid nest egg and when I found this the, Matt Williams did walk into Hyde, right? Yeah. I got Hyde because I was out there DJing with Stone. Stone didn't want to do Sunday nights at Hyde. I started doing Hyde by myself on Sundays. I was playing a little bit of weird shit. Matt came up and asked me to... Um, I didn't even know he worked for Gaga. Like He just asked me to make him a tape of what I was playing. And so I made him a... a, a when I say a tape, like I mixed something together on Ableton on my way back to Chicago or whatever. Gave it to him and he hit me like three months later. And he said... Yo, this is fucking fire. Can you send me like an hour of this? I sent him an hour of it, right? Like just me taking other, it wasn't my tracks. It was like a mixtape, right? right? So I, I sent him that. And then he hit me again. He was like, yo, this is fresh. I work for Lady Gaga. She's doing this show for Kanye West with Kanye West. And this is before the Taylor Swift shit popped off. So like they were supposed to do a show together because neither one of them could fill a stadium at that point. Mm -hmm. And so, they, they were doing the show together and they were looking for like a hip hop thing that moved into an electronic thing. And that's basically what I did at Hyde. I played fucking Mob Deep and then I played fucking Justice. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So it was like, it was like, it was like a weird mix of shit because I'm a weird fuck. So like when, when, when he got it, he was like, um, we want to use these songs for the interludes for the show. And so but we can't pay you for it. And I said, uh, well, I wasn't expecting to get paid. I didn't know this is what you're using for. I just gave you the mixtapes. So they had to go clear all those songs. They had to pay for those songs from those artists mm. for, for, the, for the show, just like it's a big show. They kicked, back up. They kicked Kanye off after the Taylor Swift thing. So then Gaga got big enough to do it on her own. So they used those mixtapes <laughs> that wait, I did. Wait, wait, wait. wait, so they kicked Kanye off because of that Taylor yeah. Swift shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that yeah. too. Yeah. Wow. So he, he he roughed up Taylor Swift at the BMAs or whatever the fuck. Yeah, was I remember that. Yeah. And and then and then they were like, oh, we're not we're not putting them on the show anymore. And coincidentally, Gaga was big enough to carry it on her own at that time. So they ended up using these mixtapes that I did, and like, there was like a style of I remix in there and some other shit. I don't even know what was in there, but they got to go back to those artists and use those things, whatever. And here's the kicker of that: they paid another dude to. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to do that job, scoring those videos, and I made zero dollars of it. He already wow. got paid. I didn't make shit. So, like, so that because of that, they said to me, "Next time we got a chance to fucking put you on, we're gonna try and put you on." And mm. so, when she started working on Born This Way, Matt called me and said she's working on this record. Okay, send us the beats. And so, I and a couple of friends sat around and made beats for two weeks straight. Boom, boom, boom. I gave her some shit that I already had. We made some new shit. And, and two days later, she called me. So 
I wasn't the only producer that she called. I wasn't one probably of a hundred. I mean, she was she was re getting really big at that point, so she had picked up the litter. Mm -hmm. So out of the tracks I sent her, she recorded three songs to it before I even met her. And then when we met, you know, she asked me if I'd keep going. So it wasn't like, I, you know, I stole a fucking mix from DJ Neva and, and all of a sudden I'm fucking getting a check for $2 million. It right, was, right, it was right. a long period. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so. No, no um, don't cry. Don't cry. Don't I know. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 will come. Yeah, 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 they will come, King. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so there's a long, there's a long gestation period in right. there too. So, so, but then, but then the next thing yeah. is I got to say is that when they, when that day got picked up, when she was like, yo, um, come on tour, I had to cancel every residency I ever had. Like my only money coming in at that point was DJ. Right. So I, I could, I couldn't go to fucking people that are like in Milwaukee and in fucking LA and be like, yo, I'm going on tour with Lady Gaga. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You got to be here on Friday night. So like I had to quit DJ. I had to cut off every single penny that I was making. So wait, I shut my face. Was you? Yeah. You had like a nest egg from like the clubs and shit prior. Well, was that's it, what I'm saying. Yeah. That's well, what I'm saying. Was it saying. gone? So was like, it gone or no? No, no. But I used every cent of that for the two and a half years I was on the road. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I got a fucking house. I got fucking kids and shit. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, wait, I so wait, you had you had kids at this time? Yeah, bro. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like I got to chip off, like you know. I'm paying for other people's shit too. I got a business like I, like that I'm running. So like I had money like going out, but zero money coming in. Because when you're out there making a record, they don't give you money, dog. Right. Like you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you you're working. If the record doesn't work, you don't get paid. So it was like two and a half years that I didn't get a check. So like I had to have enough money in the bank to get through those two years. Wow. So it's like so it's not like yeah it's the way that the way that people could sit down and describe it. They can describe it however the fuck they want, but I was at war. You know, that whole time I was at fucking war. So so it's not as easy as it, it quite gets summed up to be. You don't just steal a fucking mix from a, a wordplay mix from a DJ and next thing you're fucking winning a Grammy. There's a lot of dick stuff. In there. <laughs> Damn, these fucking rumors, man. Uh, yeah. It's all good. Though. It's all good. I, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm just saying like there's a lot of there's a lot of gray area between those two points, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Well, yeah. I, I mean, how do you feel about DJs who, like, oversimplify your journey a little bit, you know? Man, you know, I don't know. Because you, like, are, I, you, you are a DJ, and I know there's I yeah. know there's DJs that love you and, and you're tight with and you're, and, you're, and you're cool with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel like there's, like, a split of just some DJs that are still thinking, like, you're this, this dude from from i don't know 10 years ago or whatever or do you feel yeah. like it's 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 all past like i just feel like you know i don't really know you that well but for me yeah. I, you know I, I i'm actually you know i'm happy for any i'm actually happy for you i'm happy for any dude that you know has, yeah. has carved a niche for themselves and done well for themselves do you know what i mean like i and and for I, me you know i i just kind of wanted to know because i i i you know i've had certain businesses and i've had certain things and there's always just people that hate and and sometimes I let it get to me more than I would like to. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm I wondering. think that I think that time is a great cure of all moods. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. like it is what it is. I I, I rarely get upset, uh, especially nowadays. But like you know, at the time it was probably more hurtful than 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 it is now. And like you know, I love DJing, bro. Like I love it. Like I've I've been doing it for forever. Yeah. It's like I, I'm I'm not the same kind of DJ as the next DJ next to me. But like I, I'm lucky enough to still be able to get jobs DJing. I'm very conscious of not taking jobs from DJs that need the jobs. You know what I mean? Like I, I also, when this fucking stupid shit hit, I cracked up as much money as I possibly could to Amen's Young California Fund to fucking help out people. Like I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, nobody's perfect dude, but like I, I think I'm a pretty righteous dude. I'm a supporter of the community and I do the very best I can to fucking give back to what, uh, where I came from and I'll mix it up with the best of them. You know, I'm not yeah. like, uh, yeah. I'm not under the illusion that I'm the best DJ in the universe, but I, I can guarantee you I love it more than most motherfuckers do. And I'll, I'll hustle any motherfucker out there, any nice. motherfucker. I don't give a fuck who you are. Like I'll hustle you for sure. God damn. Keep that shit, white shadow. <laughs> Took his shit, man. Yo, let's go. Interview, shit, interview's man. over. <laughs> no, Drops wanna, the mic. I want to end it on that. I want to end it that shit. Like that. So interview, motherfucker. It was nice having you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> interview's over. That's it. I like it. Uh, 
Nah, man, it's I just, like that energy. It's, it's what is it? We're on day like we're on day four or five of of, of twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. That's the energy we all need. <laughs> That's White exactly. Shadow. That's the energy we all need, man. No, I, I mean it's it, it, people. People. This is not a fucking joke, dude. Like DJ is not a. To me, it's never been a joke, bro. It's a. It's a fucking lifestyle. I, I didn't get into it so I could fucking finger fuck bitches in the DJ booth or fucking suck dicks under a bridge apartment. I'm trying to fucking <laughs> earn a living yeah. and create something. Uh, this is to me. This is this is my, this was my only entry point into hip hop when I was a kid. I fucking loved hip hop, bro. I I was a I was enamored with it the second that I fucking heard it. And every moment of my childhood, I would try to figure out an entry point for a fucking lanky looking Q tip motherfucker, you know. <laughs> and like for me, it was it was being a DJ because I could stand in the back of the room and show people how smart I was about music and show people how much I cared about music. And, and I couldn't rap. I couldn't fucking dance. And like, that was how I did it. And I fucking care so much about it. And like, I feel like I have that same amount of passion for creating music. And you, and, and you know, this is all, you know, nobody, nobody looks at all the steps before the one that they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got to be a DJ. Are you a good DJ? Who fucking knows, man? Are you making money? Do you have enough in the bank to support your family if you go under for two years? Who Does that make me better than you or worse than you? You know, do I have the new fucking Virgil's? No, but I got Virgil's phone number. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. So, so at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck how you quantify yourself. I know who I am. I know what I do. I'm doing it at a relatively solid pace, I think. And and I'm happy, bro. I'm I'm happy. I'm a better person than I was yesterday, and I'll be a better person tomorrow. Yeah. And, and I'm out here working, man, doing what I love. So beyond that, you got something to say about it. Like I said, DMs are wide open. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Can I can, can, <laughs> I, can I can I say something? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Because I've always think about this. I'm a single guy, you know. Yeah. And I have a different hustle. There's a different. There's a different monster to my hustle. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think having a family, having kids, is changed your perception or just how you went about hustling? Do you know what I'm saying? Because I always, being single, I had the luxury of failing, and and you know, you know, kind of putting myself in financial risk. You know. Yeah. But if I yeah. have kids, I, I think I would have been more ruthless. Like everything would have been about like. It would have been a bottom line for me. I think I would have been more uh, m money oriented and uh, on a lot of level. And I always, I always wonder. I talk to like a lot of my homies who who have families and who had kids and hustled. Yeah. And they're businessmen. Some of them are entrepreneurs. Some of them are creators, producers. But there's a different level of hustling because they don't waste their time. They're like, I ain't got no time for this fucking with these dudes or those dudes. I need to, I need to fuck with, you know. I need to make sure every move I make counts because. I'm I'm taking time away from time I could be spending with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, and, and and I think that that journey is probably a unique journey for every human on the planet. Of course, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, to, yeah. you know, and 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 for me, it's always been you know when I was a kid, of before I was even born, my old man, my dad, who's a fucking mustached, you know, blue collar hillbilly motherfucker from middle of Ohio, he raced motorcycles and he was a mechanic. And when I was a kid, I remember like he had a bunch of boxes of all these trophies that he had of his motorcycle races that he ran. He'd never talk about it. You know what I mean? Mm. Never talk about it. And and I think that my dad, like as hard as he worked, like gave up what he loved for us to raise us, you yeah. know? And I, 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 you know, that was his choice. And I always kind of carried a little bit of guilt that I was like the cause of like, you know, him giving up his dream to like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I made a mm -hmm. and I made a really conscious decision early on when when the kids were born that I was gonna take care of their mother forever and I was gonna take care of them forever and I would never let them see me fail. Only hard work, only fucking chasing your dreams and never taking no for an answer. So there's been times and I'll be honest with you, Doug, there's been times in this journey when the kids like i remember my kid fucking got into a pair of scissors that he had for like his preschool class 
and cut holes in his pajamas and we didn't have the money to buy another set of pajamas. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, because shit goes up and shit goes down and you're learning. There's no college for this shit, bro. There's no college. If you're not in this because you, be, you know, if you're in this to make money, like that's one thing, but like, but like, I'm in it because I love it and I didn't want to fail at it and I wanted to make money and I wanted to do it. So there's ups and downs. You make decisions. Should I go to this place? Should I go to that place? Should I shut it down for a minute and try and do this business? Should I try and do this and that? But at the end of the day, I don't know that my kids had any effect on my hustle, like as far as like you're saying, yeah, yeah. but I do know, but I do know that like you always have in the back of your mind, what example am i setting at this point what what is this doing if i have to take an hour out of my day to go do this shit wh what's that going to mean from for my kids you know what i mean what mm -hmm. how's that going to work but i think that like some people have that with their family their significant other their mom you know what i mean people got to take care of their mom like everybody's got a different set of priorities that's what makes us all unique and, and, and different like i don't think that at any moment i was like there's a hustle or die moment for my kids per se but 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 like i'm never going to quit my dream because it's so important for me to show my kids that whether you succeed or fail, you stick to the fucking program, stay consistent, uh, keep going as long as you possibly can. And, and eventually success is going to find you. And when the success finds you, then the money will find you. I never chase the money, always chase the fucking success and the fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, that, that's been the, that's been the thing for me. My kids will never, ever be able to say that, that they watch their dad give up. I'll tell you that. Mm hmm. Wait, how, how many kids do you have right now? Two. Two. Is it? They're twins. I knocked them out all at once. <laughs> wait, wait, see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They're twins. A double they're twins. one hit. <laughs> they're, twi they're, 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 they're twins. So, uh, yeah, double, double it up. But, like, you know what? My, my, my publishing company's named after him. You, you're not going to find an artist out there that doesn't have a Maxwell and Carter publishing on a fucking on the label some, somewhere. Britney Spears, fucking future. Little John, fucking Maxwell and Carter publishing. I've published like 700 songs over, my, over the years. And mm. if you go into fucking. I got a fucking recording studio in the W at Hollywood and Vine, and as big as day on the wall, it says Maxwell and Carter at Publishing. My wow. dad gave me a fucking old pair of shoes and told me to get a job at TJ Maxx, and their name's on a fucking building on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. So, again, <laughs> suck my dick. That's a flex. <laughs> That's a fucking flex. Yeah. Hey, you, you, you were working with the W Hotel. Like, you created, it, you created a bunch of studio suites, right? In, uh, in some of their select hotels? Yeah, I, I did that. I would jump in a little bit, but I, I did that like to try and give back. I tried to build something that was in a corporate system that could allow people to utilize a professional-grade recording studio at a, um entry-level price. I wanted people to be able to come into the W and create... Um, feel like a superstar and not have to have the budget of Rick Ross. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so that was the mission with that. Um, so wait, how does that I, work? I, is it, is it open to the, it's open to what their guests? Is it a studio? Yeah. Uh, yeah at the re well, just, just before I continue, yeah. I actually left, I left the W probably two years ago now, I guess the beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, they had a, a, a corporate change that um, I, I just wasn't feeling for lack of a better word, I, I didn't really love the way that the new direction was going. So creatively, it just wasn't matching up anymore. Um, I, I have a very big passion to pass on um, whatever I can to, to people that are, are working, uh, young people working. Yeah. So like, I, I really thought that like there was an opportunity to do so. And like I said, I built nine of them. Um, I carved out time for for locals um, in, in countries that there was no studios and I carved out time for artists that um, were on a budget to come in and record. So, so um, yeah, the idea was a give back, uh, but I, I, I halted that program. Uh, I, I removed myself from the program in 2019. You know, uh, your identity as a DJ, uh, a producer, you know, White Shadow, you know, a lot of people, you know, obviously your work with Gaga, you know, it's, it's, it's such a monster of a machine, Lady Gaga. Now I, I, yeah. I can imagine, right? 
yeah. it's like is it hard for you because i feel like when it's go time i don't know i'm assuming this this is me speculating lady speculating. gaga's she's got a project or yo it's i'm i'm in album mode but i'm ready to go yeah you, you gotta drop everything and you gotta like you gotta go and you gotta you know you you gotta focus and sacrifice everything for this artist and and execute everything on point and make sure it's perfect and yeah. then in doing so you got to be a hundred percent committed and then the madness the 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 tours the recording press everything the marketing the videos you know yeah. it's all it can be all exhausting and i'm wondering afterwards when the dust settles and you have time for yourself do do you do you have to find a way to re-identify with yourself as like kind of like a do you know what i mean this is like a really long question so stop me or, or put me back on okay. track when i'm when i'm when I, if i go off okay when, when i when i when i first got this thing when I, when this opportunity came up at the beginning i would say that like you know there's a mixture of like five thousand emotions like you know you, you're leaving everybody you know you're leaving this job you got this great new job that potentially could make you some money and, and get you to the next spot you want to go but it could potentially fuck you and like yo if i got off that record and and, and it sucked mm -hmm. like i'm i'm done forever you know what i mean nobody considers that like you know she right. comes off the fame uh, and, and then i and then we make this record called born this way right if that re if that record sucked or didn't have a good record on it, I ruined this woman's career, and I never produced for anybody again the rest of my life. And, and let's you see let's, what I'm let's put some reference. This was Lady Gaga's lead single, first single from her second album, which was yeah, correct. highly anticipated. You know, yeah, and, oh, yeah. yeah. massive. And you wrote yeah. and produced, and you co co wrote and produced that. that correct, and but, you, I, but yeah. also eleven other songs on the record, all right. the singles. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was nine, but it's eleven. Nice. Oh, maybe it's nine. Oh, okay, fuck, fine. No, it could be nine. Don't quote me on uh, I'm that. I'm gonna you're probably right. If you if you're looking at it, it might be. It's probably nine. I don't know. I don't know. It's Wikipedia, so that's why. Yeah, they could, they could be going also, man. <laughs> yeah, could, could, it's probably nine, but um, uh, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just saying, like that. The first single was the big single, right. and it could have it could have done a huge belly flop, mm -hmm. and then. You know, you don't ever get to work in that realm again. So there's an immense amount of pressure for that. Right. And then, and then also, you know, her as an artist, you, as a producer, just as a, as a DJ, if you show up and you DJ and the fucking party sucks, you know, the party goes on next week. Like you just hire another DJ, right? Like yeah, the yeah. same as a producer. If I come in there and the record sucks, I just don't ever get to, to produce the record a record again. Mm -hmm. it, she gets to go. She, they'll find another producer to do whatever because she's too big of a commodity. So there's a lot of pressure there. But then also, as a caring individual, you want to make sure that you're allowing this person who's entrusted you to help them construct their project the way that they want it to do the best by them you have like a fiduciary responsibility to go in and do the best you can by this person so mm -hmm. she's out there working and 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 doing her shows and like i'm trying to do as best the best i can and fernando garibay and i were both producers on that project to to get this um these records the, the best in the best space they can so it's like you're under a lot of pressure and I, like a lot of self-imposed pressure a lot of, you know, when Jimmy, I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm answering to Jimmy, I means my boss all of a sudden, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, that's not a motherfucker you want to make upset with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. yeah. So, so for, for a number of reasons, I, I wanted Jimmy to like me because I loved NWA, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, so, so anyway, yeah, I think for the first record go around was kind of like a whirlwind, like, I was crying all the time and I was not sleeping and I was drinking too much and I was never home and wow. like everything was all over the place. And then like the second record was even heavier than that, like way heavier than that because the pressure's on again about mm -hmm. making another record. And then also you got these changing of the guards, people's people coming in, coming out. Now I, Fernando's gone and I'm in Fernando's seat. Like I'd stepped up from JV to varsity and right. then there's all kinds of other shit going on. So I, I'll, I'll be like 100% honest with you, dude. Like the good drinking that I did when I was a DJ, like going out, having fun, having shots, banging them out with, with, with the boys and fucking going to the next city. 
turned into really medicinal drinking during that time. Mm. Um, and and it, I thought it was cool because like I'm everything's going well. The second single was applause, and like that went went up the flagpole, and then we had do what you want, which went up the flagpole, and then, you know what I mean. Like we had good songs on that on on the next record, and so I, I'm like, okay, cool, I'm killing it. Yeah, pass it and let's go. And then it's like when our pop was over, which was the second record, mm-hmm. I. I kind of, I cracked up. Like I, I legit had a first big crack where I was like, I was a mess. Like I look like a mess. I look back at pictures of myself and I'm like, holy shit, bro. Like you were off, off. Like you didn't, you know what I mean? Were you, were, you, spe- were you like thinner than usual? <laughs> like, like well, yeah, I mean, looking? no, I mean, like I, I don't know. Like I was fucking just gnarly looking, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. my, all over the place. I, I could see my eyes were like dead. You know what I mean? But do you, so like, were you aware of this? Like, do you, it wasn't self-destruction, right? It wasn't self-destructive, right? What, what would you, what would you say? It was, I, I grew up in a, I grew up in an environment where if you went to a therapist, you were like a piece of shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. like, you were, you were either like, you were a psycho. I mean, my, yeah. You were like, yeah, a psycho. Like, like really fucked crazy. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or fucking gay or like a girly man or whatever the fuck like that, right. like, you know, that, that, that generation would have dubbed you as. So like in my mind, I, I didn't have anywhere to turn. Like I, I wasn't like on, I wasn't on like any kind of Zoloft shit or whatever. I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. Mood stabilizers. But like, I think all of us as artists, because every DJ is an artist, everybody who does like, any sort of artistic endeavor has a similar heartstring tied between them. And I think we can all relate to the fact that like sometimes as highly sensitive people, like we take things in a way that are, that can be really load bearing. And so rather than addressing that and making it okay to address it, I was taking on all this pressure and just fucking, man, I, if I wanted a fucking bottle of Jameson at four thirty in the morning, I, all I had to do was be like, yo, give me a bottle of Jameson. And somebody got me a bottle of Jameson. Yeah, At that yeah. point, I had my, my own tour bus. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm rolling around the country in my own fucking tour bus. So I'll tell you a crazy story. You want to hear a crazy story? I'm all, we yeah, pulled I'm into fucking, we, 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 pulled, we pulled into Switzerland. We were in Switzerland, and we pulled up into the studio that fucking Yellow owned. You remember Yellow? Oh yeah, from Ferris Bueller. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so these dudes, <laughs> these dudes owned this studio and went to Switzerland, and we had been fucking drunk all night in the bus, smoking cigarettes, listening to fucking music, blah blah. Pull up to the studio, and we get out of there like fucking Spinal Tap, you know, get out of the bus, fucked up. And the guy says to my engineer, like, "Oh, you guys, what can we get you?" It was seven thirty in the morning, and we were fucked up. And, and I was like, give me a six pack or whatever. And they give me a six pack. And the engineer goes, I, 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 if you could grab me like a, a eight ball of cocaine and like a 14 year old boy, that'd be straight. And we, we had him like look at each other and laugh. <laughs> Yo, have you, have you seen my face when he said that shit? Uh, but, but, but like, but like, you know, oh we, were, we were fucking wasted and just being idiots. Like, you know, and, and I'm not fucking kidding you. I'm not kidding. I cracked a beer. We're sitting in the fucking control room. We're plugged in and we're like lighting stuff up because what we wanted to do was get everything set, get back in the bus, go to the hotel and sleep off the fucking night all right. day and then not have to work at night. So we're, we're all plugged in. We're getting ready to leave. And this guy, with this guy, <laughs> yeah. comes up and goes, okay, we got your cocaine, but we're having trouble with the 14-year-old boy. <laughs> and I was like, what? What? I was like, no, dog, no, that was yeah. a joke. We That's insane. Like, yeah, so I mean, like, honestly, dude, like, and we, like, I was mellow. Like, we were mellow. Like, none of us were, like, off on the fucking nut train. Like, nobody, and we were following motherfuckers who I, who I will not name, but, like, we were following people on tour where somebody from Universal Music would meet us at a place and be like, what do you need? And we'd be like, nothing, man. Show us where the take us to dinner or whatever. They'd be like, we got this bag of fucking pills for you. And I'd be like, I'm good, you know? Right. And, and, and so we want to get drunk and go to dinner. And, and, uh, and, and we got called fucking pussies all the time. We were like the weakest touring group of, of anybody on universal music. Cause we weren't even trying to party. We we're just drunk and doing our thing, you know, wow. like working. Yeah. But, but at that point, 
you think that you're the good guy. You think you're, everything you're doing is not wrong because you're the least of the evils, but you're, you're getting fucked up and bury your feelings all the time. So when our pop was over and it had come out, I was like, I need some time off. Mm -hmm. And then Gaga jumped right into Joanne and, and Mark Ronson on mm -hmm. that. And I, and I, was, I was like, I can't, I, I mentally can't wrap my head around this right now. Like, so yeah. I started my publishing company and started working on other things like outside of like the realm of sitting there and producing, did trying you, to build a business. Did you feel like you were betraying her a little bit? Like, but, or did you feel like you really needed it? Uh, you know, you know what I mean? I know, honestly, like she wanted it, what she wanted to do at that time. Mm -hmm. part, part of being good at what you do is knowing when to say, no too you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's like if you if, if if somebody comes up to you tomorrow and says yo i got this fucking polka thing in bavaria and i'm gonna give you fifty thousand dollars to go over there and fly and do it uh, do you do it do, you know do you run and try and learn everything you can about polka <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like it, it's like it's like for me it's like yo i i love you Call me when the fucking hip hop thing happens and, and go hire a polka DJ. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm good. So it's like, for me, that's what that record was. It was like, they we're working on this country shit. And I love country music. I'll fucking go toe to toe with anybody on some Merle Haggard and some Waylon Jennings shit. But like, what they were doing, I didn't understand it. So like, I was kind of like, I was okay, you know, and she was okay. And I listened to stuff and I, I, I gave my opinion. And like I said, she's like my sister. So whenever she called, I was there and I was just trying to keep stay out of the way because it wasn't my wheelhouse. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, like it, it actually was like a good period of time. But what happened during that period of time is that I didn't stop. I didn't stop drinking. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't stop the amount. I it just was happier. And so then when a star is born went off, Holy shit, man. I, I was ready to quit after that. I was done with fucking records after that fucking record was over because I jumped right back in the pool completely unaware that I was still in the, at the end of our pop. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you were, you were still stuck in this whirlwind of like, you know, I don't know, like, I would, it wasn't, it's not like a, is it substance where you, you were, you were like, you were using alcohol to, I don't know, self-medicate in some way? Yeah. yeah. No, but I, I was, I, I mean, like, honestly, I, I was full-blown, like, drunk asshole. Not in the way where I was, like, passing out or punching people or being an asshole. I was fully using alcohol as a coping mechanism to, instead of facing what was making me sad or what was making me upset, which right. I think is the definition of what it means to be an alcoholic. But, like... It's a slippery slope, dog. Like you, one day you're on the top of the fucking mountain and you can do whatever you want. And then the next day, like you're like having a fucking mimosa at 10 in the morning on a Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, wait, I, something's wrong, you know? So after A Star is Born, I made like a serious commitment to like say, I got to figure myself out before I do anything else. And I got to clean up what I got going on here. And I got to fucking make this right like you know what i mean like I, like i had to face it's really hard to face a problem that you have that you've created that that people look at you as you know what i mean like it's right. like a, it's like a negative negative stigma but it all roots back from having like this monstrous and i'm not trying to big up myself but like i'm a very kind sensitive person like and, and 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 it's hard for me to even say that out loud to three dudes over a Zoom call. But like, but like, <laughs> but, 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 but but like, I but, am. And I mean, you did work with you did work with my little pony, so sensitive. That's right, baby. It's an understatement. That's right. <laughs> so 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 what I'm saying is that like it's like that that whole that whole thing. It's like you're facing, you're looking at yourself, and you're like. Yeah, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm drowning a little bit here. I got to do something and it's fucking not easy. And part of that is like just owning up to the fact that like maybe it's not super dope to be drinking five days a week. You know what I mean? Like and, yeah. and, and trying to do whatever. So I went through all that shit, man. I spent too much money. I hired really bad people. Like this is not all a rose walk. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everything that you go through, uh, you know, as I, I, I'm still trying to figure it out, man. I haven't got it figured out. I'm still trying to figure it out. Was there a defining moment or uh, and like an incident that happened that kind of 
made you kind of realize and look in the mirror and just spot that problem? Like, holy shit. You know, I, yeah. I, I've talked to certain people uh, in AA and everyone has a rock bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, every, and it's like no one realizes their problem till they hit that rock bottom. It, you could love, you could tell them, you, could, you can't even help them. You can't even help your best friend. They got to figure it out on their own. They got to hit that rock bottom on their own. Did you have something yeah. like that? Uh, you know, honestly, I think everybody, like you said, everybody's journey is kind of different. Yeah. And mine was less of like a crashing halt than like just a slow, long burn. And and I'm pretty tenacious about things. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's like I knew that there was something wrong for a long time. Yeah. And, and, and there wasn't like a singular moment. <clears throat> it was almost like a, I'm tired of feeling terrible all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And like, I'm tired of being tired and I'm tired of like, fucking crying and you know drinking wine with my dinner and crying about shit all the time like i gotta figure this out so like really i I was i was good friends with this person and and we got into a bit of a uh disagreement nothing even like like that big of a deal it was like a slow burning disagreement we decided to go our separate ways and like i could not properly assess if I was wrong or not. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Like I could I couldn't properly assess if if that person was wrong or I was wrong. And then there was like a moment where I was like, I gotta I gotta start over again. I'm tough enough to start over again. I gotta start over again. And so I tried a couple things, including AA, and it didn't really work for me. And then like a couple other things, like read a bunch of books and blah blah. And then honestly, bro, one day I bought a fucking bottle of like 1942 and like two packs of american spirits and fucking got fucked up and then i woke up the next day and never had another drink or another cigarette again wow so uh that that was august of like 2018 wow it's it's really recent it's really recent yeah it was after a star it was after i finished star is born like i was heart i was heartbroken after that record was over like fucking destroyed like that took everything out of me that could possibly be taken i got i gotta say a star born stars born is a masterpiece to me i think it was it's one of those things it's just such a defining soundtrack and you know Mm -hmm. that movie was amazing the soundtrack was amazing the music was amazing and yeah and music so i I, you know and for me for to look at the evolution of lady gaga right you know from yeah. from from the work you did at Star, uh, you know, uh, Born This Way to A Star Is Born. I mean, how did you approach that? How did you approach that? Because, you know, you were just talking about the country album. You're like, this is not for me. How did you yeah. feel like this was for you? Like you you could tackle this. Oh, I, I knew I knew it. Like, yeah. I, I, I actually the funny thing about that record mm-hmm. is that like I knew it. Like when I saw the first things and she said, I'm working on this, I said, I got to come down and meet you. And they were working on the Bradley Cooper parts first, right? Like she was doing her parts with Bradley Cooper. They hadn't written any songs for her character yet. And so it was like the beginning of, of her writing songs for a character. And she call, this is actually a fucked up story. She called me and said, I'm down in the studio, come down in the studio. And, and I know she was at the studio. She was over at Rick's place, um, uh, Shangri-La, or Malibu. She was like, I'm at the studio, come over. I was like, okay, cool, bet. So I drove all the way to Santa Monica at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, which anybody from L.A. knows is like fucking putting needles in the tip of your dick. It's the worst fucking thing of all time. Oh, it's the worst fucking drive of all yeah. time. Boom, That's why terrible. I hate the West Side. I hate going I to know, the West Side. Fuck it, yeah. It's terrible. Because of that so drive. I show up at Shangri-La, and she's not there. And I'm like, yo, where are you? She's like, oh, shit, I didn't tell you. I'm at East West. And that's literally a block from where I started. So I drove all the way. (laughs) I drove all the way across town, came all the way back. And and this is like a three and a half hour journey at this point. By the time I get to East West, she's gone. She's like, I got to go. I'm like, oh, my God. All right. I'm staying here and I'm going to write some shit down. And so we I stayed. And I fucking finished an entire bottle of Jameson and I wrote that look what I found and is that all right on the same night, the first night. Wow. I wrote both of those songs. That's and crazy. then and then and then um, of course they went through different incarnations and co- collaborations and write, but but the both of those songs started on the first night, um, right after she left. So I came up with those initial ideas, and then from that we started working on a bunch of other shit, and then 
you know, we had probably 30, 30 songs. And then while we were doing that, we started working on what was going to be her next studio record, uh, which is now Chromatica, that record. Um, I will reserve all of my comments for that particular thing for a much later date. But I, I, I uh, you know, we finished out, we finished out Stars Born, started working on Chromatica, and then I, 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 I couldn't do that one either. So, mm. um, wow. uh, but, but now it's again, like, listen, I ran seven miles this morning. I couldn't even fucking run seven blocks in 2018. You know what I'm saying? And like, I meditate every day and I fucking haven't had a drink, haven't had a cigarette, eat semi good, except for when it comes to carrot cake and donuts. But like, I, I'm in, you got to break the egg to make the omelet at a certain point. And life is a continuing series of evolutions of small, big and otherwise. And your only job as a human being is to recognize them and assess them correctly when they're presented to you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I got a question. I got a few questions. I want to talk yeah. about, I want to talk about the writing. Cause to me, writing is very different from producing. Yeah. And for, for someone to move from, I don't, you know, I want to talk about that, but I do want to talk about since we're on the topic of health, you know, never and I had a com uh, a conversation last night. You know, we just feel like we're in a slump, like we're not motivated to work out. We're not motivated to do a lot of things. I don't know if it's just everything going on with COVID cool. and being locked in and, and all of these things. Uh, and I was wondering, you know, after you started, I guess, approaching sobriety and not drinking anymore, what were, what was you know, the, the helpful um, tactics that you took or used to start just like being more healthy and, and going out and, and running and little by little and doing all of these things. Uh, I, I read some kind of quote that was like, uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was basically like a, a man who can conquer another man could consider himself uh, you know, the winner, but uh, a man that can conquer his own demons is like the, the, could be the king of the world type vibe. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, so, so to me, it's always been like a, a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. it's like everybody, like what you're saying, I, I have that some days, like, I'm not, I'm not saying this to like brag or anything that I did that. I'm saying like, it's fucking tough all the time. So your, your biggest challenge in, in any situation is what you do with your mind your mind is like so fucking powerful dude it's like the, it's the hardest heaviest computer on the planet earth and so like just like you have to clear your cache or whatever cache whatever the fuck it is on on your mac it's like you have to do the same thing with your mind every once in a while and if it takes a hard reset getting out of your position to do something different re-challenging yourself writing down goals i make like lists every day i'm a bit of a weirdo but like I, 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 I'm very, like I said, I'm very focused when it comes to challenging both myself professionally and personally. And, 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 you know, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose and you can't beat yourself up for any, you know, for any loss. You just got to learn from it, you know? Yeah. So it's okay. It's okay to feel fucking bad. Like it's okay to feel bad. The best thing that you possibly could have done. You did it, man. You talked to your boy, you had a conversation about it. You've assessed it. You're aware of it. Now you try and make cr positive steps towards taking that first, you know, foot out of the door to run the marathon. You don't have to run the marathon today, but like, fuck, do five push-ups before you go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking learn a new program. I don't know, like, whatever motivates you. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 there's no right answer. It's you got to find. That's the trick. You got to figure it out for yourself. Because my shit, I'm sure, is a lot different than a lot of other motherfucker shit. You know? Yeah. I I, so, I I um for the first time this year I I started uh, therapy I started like yeah. the therapy process. When did you what what when did you start that? Probably the, the, like right in 2017. Mm -hmm. What what is yeah. what, what is the main things that I don't you know I don't want to get into your personal life too much. But what is the main things that that you learned from that? I'm a Virgo, so like not to be too astrological on everybody, but like <laughs> I have I, I, I have like. I'm a very OCD and very control. I have to have control over stuff. And it often leads me to being like upset or angry. Right. Like, you know what I mean? And that upset or angry leads me to like a whole negative chain of events, which eventually led me to drinking. You know what I mean? From mm -hmm. being sad, yeah, yeah. which exacerbates the sadness. So, so it's like, I think that like, just what I said earlier, it's like, I go, I, the biggest thing from therapy was learning that, 
everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. You know what I mean? This is like a tick on the hour. You know, it's not a, it's not a whole life and one problem. And, and to be able to assess like the situation for what it is and know that everything is not under your control and, and when to let things pass by and when to, when to kind of address them when you can, you know, the most, the most, um, you know, fruitful way possible. Yeah. And, I, and I think that like, it's just practicing anytime you're doing like that. It's like a new, I mean, dog, like, I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to let me, let me just pretend like you're 30 for a minute. Right. Yeah. Like if, you, if you're 30 years old and you just started going last year, you, you got a couple of years to you figure out what the fuck has been going on for the last 30. Right. You know, the last 29. So like, you just can't beat yourself up about, about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's funny. So like, that, that, that's what it's to me. Yeah. It's funny because I would. I'm curious to hear how the writing, recording, production process is as this new white shadow, or as this kind of rebirth white shadow. How much different you know, it's going to be? I, 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 I would love to play some stuff for you. I have some monster, monster things, and I will tell you this. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you this unabashedly. So I, I have no problem telling you this. Yeah. I am fucking better than I've ever been in my entire life at this mm. job. Right, wow. right now, wow. better than I've ever been. I'm, fuck, I'm, 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 I'm going nuts. Mm. I'm going fucking nuts. And it's not just the production. It's like a, an expanded mindset. And let me just back up two seconds. Yeah. I graduated with a creative writing degree. My mom gave me a fucking book of raps that I wrote in third grade. I've been doing this shit since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. making fucking beats on my tape player and writing down raps about Robbie Long in my class in this fucking size 12 Reebok in this monster dick when we were in sixth grade. I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been at this shit since the fucking 80s. So it's like, it's like it is what it is. But like I, I, I will say that that part of my – Jumping over the hurdle was that I'm never going to be able to DJ if I'm not doing shots. I'm never going to be able to write. I'm never going to be able to access this gnarly part of my brain unless I'm completely fucked up. And, and, and uh, you know, James Dean or fucking, you know, Jimi Hendrix or fucking smoking cigarettes. And I want to look like that or feel like that. Right. And, and that was a big that was a big hurdle, man, because like it was something that I built as an identity for myself. And you have to dismantle that identity and, 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 and rebuild it. But I can tell you this, without fail, 100% of the time, if you do it the right way, you come back fucking way better than you were before. You fucking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all of those are just crutches. They're, they're eye patches, like, right? It's like being able to see out of your left eye all of a sudden. There's no way you can't hit the ball better when you can see out of both eyes. You dig? Yeah. So you're not even drinking like socially you're not you're not touching a drink at all you know uh, me and i you, remember the, the last time i saw you was at um on the on the i was like yo are you drinking you was just like nah i stopped drinking i was surprised yeah. you said that i'm like what <laughs> yeah no but yeah and trust me there's no place worse to walk into if you're not drinking or smoking cigarettes than a vegas casino <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's what comes out your free just sitting at the fucking yeah. It's like spots. walking into a brothel if you're celibate. Yeah. It's the fucking yeah. worst idea of all time. <laughs> but, 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 but like, you know, it, you, I'm telling you, dude, it's little nuggets like that. When you walk out and you, and you didn't, like, you uh, achieved an accomplishment like that, mm-hmm. um, you, you, you built, it's like a stack. It's like stacking a fucking coin on top of the next coin. And by the time you know it, you're not even thinking about it anymore. I don't even think about it anymore. Like, for real, for real. Like, I sometimes... I went down and did with Danny. I hung out with Danny West in Texas, like, because I got COVID already. So I wasn't worried about getting it again. So I, I went down and hung out with Danny in Texas and checked out that place that he just opened. And I played records for a couple hours. And I was looking out and I was like, God damn, did I ever look like this? Like, what the fuck? And it's yeah. like, uh, yes, I did. I 100% did. And it's like, you start to like, just have a different perspective about shit. And, and bro, listen, it's scary as fuck when you start. But then your body starts changing, your mind starts changing, you start sleeping better, you start fucking feeling better, you start hearing songs differently and fucking remembering stuff that you forgot about. Like it's like this whole different vibe that like takes a second to pay off, but all good things take a second to pay off, yo. And I'm and I'm only saying this because I, I went through it and I never in my life thought I could do it and I did it. Yeah. Interesting. I'm I'm going through the same hurdle and I and I have conversations with never about this all the time where we just think it's an impossible feat to not drink and DJ. Like it's just, yeah, it's just one of those things where like, 
we're like, oh, maybe just one drink, like two drinks. You know, I even remember talking to my therapist about it. And they're like, well, and she was even like, if you have this much fear, you know, you know, like you don't have to over drink. And I'm like, I don't really even I don't even think I over drink. But then yeah. I was like, I was like, am I am I an alcoholic? I was like wondering, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's part of like the thing is putting a label on yourself. You don't need to put a label on yourself. Right, right. I, like I, I, it's nothing negative. Listen, there's nothing negative about being an alcoholic either. Mm-hmm. I have I have had many people be like, oh, you know, Paul stopped drinking, but he's not an alcoholic. And I'm like, oh, fuck you. I was an alcoholic. Like it's I don't I didn't go to Alcoholics Anonymous because it didn't work for me, but it works for a lot of people. Right. But that doesn't mean I wasn't an alcoholic. It just means that like I handled it differently. And, and, and alcoholism is a disease, bro. It's a fucking disease. My grandpa fucking died under a bridge abutment because he was hammered and disappeared for three days. Like it's like yeah. a, a linear things happen like in your life. And just because I was on a jet and I was drinking a bottle of Jameson doesn't make me any different than a fucking being in a garbage can on fucking La Cienega and drinking a, a fifth of Jameson. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like I was doing the same thing. I'm not I, I was judging myself differently because I needed to. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like for me, I needed to say I got to quit everything. Because like many artistic people I know, we're all or nothing people, dude. We're all or nothing people. Like you, you go for it, you do it, you don't follow the rules the way everybody else does. Right. And that kind of mentality w- will lead you into dark parts if you let it. And you have to just be aware of where you're at. And if, Doug, if you feel like you want to quit drinking, you absolutely, I know you, bro. And I, it, like, I'm not trying to be a preacher here, but like, if you want to do it, you'll do it. Yeah. And if you need to do it, you'll figure out when you need to do it. Yeah. And like, just don't put, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Keep talking to people about it. You got good friends. Now you got the fucking aid of a therapist. Don't, don't, don't fucking worry about it so right. much. Just, just do the best you can and do what you think is right. And it's going to turn out to be right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I, I think, I think it's the pressure we put on ourselves. I mean, for me, yeah. it's the pressure we, I put on myself and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a more of a performance anxiety than an actual yeah. disease for me because I don't really have any desire to drink outside of DJing. Like even yeah. when I'll be in a club with never like uh, spectating or just hanging out. And I don't even want to drink. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the only time I ever drink and I feel the need to drink is when I'm about to DJ or perform. And it's literally, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah, but you know what's yeah. crazy? I don't feel that anymore. You I don't. swear to you on my life, I don't feel it anymore. Mm. I used to be my number one thing. I used to go and fucking get to the club, do a bunch of shots, fucking pour a vodka soda, yeah, go up yeah. there and fucking start DJing. And, and yeah. that's, the way, that's the way I did it every single night. And now I go up there and I'm like, What's the worst? What, what are these people going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what, if, what if I do suck right now? You know what I'm saying? At right. least I, you know, because a lot of times I probably did suck when I got up there and I just didn't know. I was the only person who didn't know it. You know, now at least I know if I suck, I can correct it while I'm going through, you know? So it's like, it's like I, I, I'll tell you this. Alcohol causes way more problems than it fixes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Just like, just like anything like that, you know? Yeah. So, so, so. At the end of the day, people some people drink like they can like gentlemen and some people don't. And I and like I thought I was. I probably was. And then I thought I was, and then I wasn't, and I thought I was, and then I knew I wasn't. And when I knew I wasn't, <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the back seat for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Till I till I get that vineyard in Italy and then I'll just be a seventy year old fucked up titty grabbing maniac. <laughs> 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 no offense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, none, none taken over here, but, yeah. <laughs> but it's not my titty, so I don't know. Uh, I hopefully, hopefully, it'll be a lovely young lady that I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, so uh, I want to talk about writing because yeah. it's I don't often meet writers. You know, yeah. I, I meet a lot of DJs, and if I meet a lot of DJs, I meet a lot of DJs who produce, but yeah. I never really meet DJs who write. So I think it's. I'm wildly impressed that you write, number one. I can't even imagine the process of writing a song or, or anything. But like you said, you, you have been writing in the past. But like, you know, I wrote in the past. I, I, I rapped too and I wrote a bunch of shit too as well. And, and, you know, it's something that I feel like is missing in a lot of music today. And maybe that's just my point of view. I feel like some of the writing is missing in a lot of the music. Sure. But I kind of wanted to talk about your process you know, the stars born, I thought it was amazing. I thought the writing was insane for that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I, I want to talk about your process and, and how you develop that. And 
I mean, honestly, how do you how do you gain the confidence to do that too as well? And, and that's a good do, that's a that's, you know? that's a good question. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good question because I think that when we first started out, uh, you know, when I was when I was a, a younger person, like a fucking nineteen, like it was a big deal in Detroit, like or in Michigan in general. Whenever you would go DJ, it was like a three part thing. You you come at the beginning of the night. You do freestyle shit. Like when Stone, when I first met Stone and Graham, yeah, and, and like I would talk on the mic. They'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> like they were like, "Put that away." And they're like, "Like I was like, everybody does that here." And they're like, "You, you sound like an idiot." And I'm like, "Ah, uh, like the, in the Midwest, is everybody talks on the mic the whole night?" And he's like, you, we, "Nobody does that in LA." You know what I mean? Yeah, nobody yeah. does that in Vegas. Now everybody talks, but back then when I started, I would be like, "Yo, fuck you, fuck you, suck my dick," ah, you know? And like people would be like, "Whoa, <laughs> this guy's crazy." It's so, what so, is wrong with that guy? Yeah, right. But, but like, yeah, you know, but motherfucker, 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 woo, and like everybody go crazy, right? So it's like, it's like. At the beginning of the nights when I started, it was like you would have open mic. You play hip hop and like somebody come up and be like, yo, I want to battle my boy. And then fucking give him two mics. And like from 9 to 1030, people would rap. So like all the DJs would always be like fucking with each other and talking shit on the mic and blah, blah. And then like, you know, but I always wrote, 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 wrote. I wrote, I'm like an idiot. Like if you picked up like my phone right now, you'd either think I was a fucking assassin or a fucking, you know, poet laureate. I don't know. It's like I'm the saddest person in the universe some days. And some days I'm writing shit about like the state of, uh, you know, the union in the United States. So it's like I just write all the time. It's how I get my thoughts out of my head. So for me, and I think that if you know anybody who knows me, can attest to this. I, I know the lyrics to every song in the universe. So I could send us fucking rocket to, to the moon. If, if I had nuclear, you know, physics in my brain instead of fucking song lyrics. But like, I'm, I've always been a student of like, um, the written word. So it's like, I mean, I got a tattoo of Edgar Allan Poe on my wrist. You know what I mean? Like I, I love, I love, I love writing. So it's like, uh for me to translate that into music came pretty early and I don't, I'm not always saying it was good. I started off as a good editor and then, you know, I, I don't know that I'm the best writer of all time, but I can say that to you that I enjoy it more than anything else I do. I enjoy it more than producing or DJing now writing. And is it, is it just a process where you just start building the confidence when, you know, how, how do you, yeah, it's like anything else. I think it's yeah. like anything else, you know? And it's like, is it, you know, I have a couple people that I know will tell me I'm full of shit, and I have a couple people I know that'll big up me. And if I feel like I need to get big up, I'll call the people that big up me. And if I need to be told I feel like uh, you know if I'm shitty, then I call those people. So it's like I think you need to have like a little bit of confidence in yourself. You need to do some trial and error, and and I think that some people are just you can't if you're not a writer, it's hard to become a writer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're not a DJ, you can go up there with your iPod and play, but like there's something inside of you, uh, each of you, right. that like that like has led you to have this be a long career because you're good at it. And it's like an internal microchip in yeah. your fucking computer. It's like a spark, so there's a lot of people, like, but you have to have that yeah. spark, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so so it's like sometimes I hear a song and then, oh my boy, my boy, and I did this and I wrote it and I and I gotta be like, yo. That's not dope, you know? And, and here's why it's not dope, because your hook didn't come in at 45 seconds. You got no hero to the story. Like, what's your narrative that you're telling somebody? Um, and, and, and because even in the worst songs, even in the worst songs, fucking Fifi by fucking 6 9 there's a hero of the story. There's a fucking point to the story. There's a, you know what I mean? Like, there's, I think there's a common thread between songs that people know. Uh, and, and I think you need to know the ground rules at first and pay attention to the ground rules. And then you need to have, you need to read people, people that don't read cannot write. So it's like you write like you read. Mm -hmm. If you're reading the back of cereal boxes all the time, you're, you're not going to write shit of substance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I, I just got done reading fucking the Republic by Plato and fucking the Hermetica by fucking Hermes. Like, you know, I read weird shit. So I write shit about the human condition, about fucking the way, uh, it makes me feel and like through my constant drive to make that better I, I i might hit a fucking lick every once in a while where i write something down I'm like oh shit that would be a good song let me put it over here and so then when we're in there i know the melody in my head and a lot of times when i when i produce 
I already have a melody in my head now I have words to it and then I can walk into a session and be like yo here's what I was thinking for this what do you think of the idea of doing this and the writer either dig the other writers or the other artists like they either dig it or don't mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so so I, I it, you, you're just preparing yourself to to go into battle if, if you don't if you like pick up a fucking fruity loops one day on a microphone and think you're gonna write a fucking hit song I would I would beg to differ is there is there a difference in the writing between melody writing and like lyric writing? Do you know, or does it kind of yeah. go together in in some places to you? I, I know a lot of people that are really good at writing melody that are fucking shit at writing lyrics, mm. and I know a lot of people that are the opposite. I consider myself more of a lyric writer than a melody writer, but I can do a little bit of both. You know, yeah. so like both most times when I that the reason why I think I pair up with Gaga so well is because she's a fucking incredible incredible like writer and melody person mm -hmm. and i'm an incredible editor like i'm a monster editor if anything else like i'm a dopest editor alive so it's like when somebody comes in and says xyz 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 i can be like yo you know who else did that foreigner did that and this is why this worked and this is why this did it. what if you change the z over here to the y and move the y over to a p and then everybody's like oh shit yeah that makes sense right. so like i have a i have an in-depth knowledge like that i'm a dope editor but i also have so many if you talk to me long enough or you rewind this interview i'm sure i got a couple choice metaphors my metaphors are fucking fire son <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so I, I think that i've always expressed myself metaphorically and so i have a pretty solid uh a pretty solid grasp of the use of metaphor so yeah all that combined you know I, i'm i'm not under the illusion that i'm you know desmond child or fucking you know whatever but like uh I, I definitely can hold my own when it comes to shit. And I, and, and I think that's something you can develop for your whole life. I think you can be, be a producer for a limited amount of time because it's temporary. And it replaces itself like really cyclically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, but writing, good writing never, ever goes away. That's why people still fucking read Shakespeare. You know what I mean? I, I find that like being a good editor or refiner I feel like a lot of DJs have it in them and they just don't think to write or they don't think to enter that area. And but I, but I, but as DJs, you know, we're so analytical. We're breaking down songs, we're we're memorizing catalogs and genres of music, you know? Yeah. We're we're remembering we we remember like this bridge and this pre chorus and we, we we know all the best parts of every record, you know, like all the best lyrics, all the best breaks, all the best everything. This has a three bar intro. This has a, a four bar, eight bar intro. Like we remember yeah. all of these things. And I feel like a lot of DJs, uh, you know, some of them I talk to, they're like, I don't have the writing. I can't write. I can't. I'm like, yo, like you just you guys just never tap into that shit or, you know, you guys never like try that shit. But I I just want to see more DJs. And I, I'm starting to see it more. It's like DJs producing became it started with like blends into mashups, mashups into like you know keyboards, into production, and then it became like edits, edits. And I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm really starting this year, especially. I'm really starting to see all of these DJ producers evolve a little bit more. And I feel like the next step for all of these motherfuckers is gonna be writing. And I just yeah. think I just think they need to tackle that shit. And it's just so foreign, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and, and listen, I, 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 I think it's one of those things where you see yourself a tree, as a tree, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, uh, this is what I do, here's who I am, this is all I can do, this is what I'm known for, this is why it works. But if you back up a little bit and, like, realize what you're doing, like, it's a monster feat to be able to access the emotion and the intelligence to control a group of people. Mm. Yeah. which is really the object of anybody. The CEO of a fucking company has to sit there and assess people's emotions and their objectives and like their, their whatever, uh, you know, moods and, and, and put those together in a way that they can control people. So like I always, dude, I always refer, even in the biggest business deals, like it's like, what's the difference between me putting together 
a, a set for a club, set for the radio, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a bunch of DJs for the same club. So it's one set after the other for the whole night to go into putting together a playlist for a brand. Then to go from the brand and, and figure out how to fucking work out, you know, whatever's next. Like you're really doing the same. You're doing the same task. You're spinning the same wheel. You're just spinning it in a different way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like really the only person. If you are truly a DJ and you're not just up there fucking doing running through the motions trying to make money, because make it for any DJ that I know would DJ for free. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that. Like they have. They would. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're good at it. They love it. Like which which leads them to be the highest paid DJs of many most of the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so what I'm saying is that like mo- most people that that pigeonhole themselves are are the only ones doing themselves a disservice. If you can't see yourself as a fucking businessman, you're never going to be a businessman. You know what I mean? And you've always been a businessman, right? Like, I mean, I, I have my K new t shirt still somewhere locked away. And, 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 I love it. And, 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 and uh, you know, everybody's a hustler, blah, blah. But like, it's like there's some of these, some of these young guys, it's like they're chasing the money and they're not chasing the actual art of it. Mm. So they don't see themselves as a fucking writer because they're trying to write something that they don't really want to write because it doesn't fit into what's making money right now. Right. You know what I mean? But as we know from the events of the last year, like you could be Fleetwood Mac and have the number one song in 19 fucking 70 and have it again because some dude rides with a cranberry juice and a fucking skateboard. It's still a good song. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like access your emotions, read fucking, uh, you know, try and, and learn what the, what the structure is of an actual song. And then once you perfect those things, then you can tailor them to fit what your actual mood is as a human being. Mm. And, and I'll tell you one more thing in this particular realm. I hit a lot of hurdles and I made a couple fucking bad, you know, bad decisions over my career because after I, like after I finished Born This Way, every motherfucker was after me. Oh, you got to put out a record. You got to put out a record. You got to do this, blah, blah. And yeah, at yeah. that time, it was like it was like Zed and it was like fucking, you know. Avicii. Not kick, yeah, kick Avicii and, and whatever. But all of it was like this kind of electronic music that I didn't really grow up with. I wasn't a monster fan of, although I did appreciate some of it. The stuff that I appreciated was left of center, a little bit dirty. Like I like Gustafelstein and Boys Noise and shit like that. Mm. Like I, I, and I appreciate the musicality of Zeb, but like at that point, it was like, you got to do this. And I was like, I don't want to do it because I don't, I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to get put in that box. And so I said no to it. And, and, and I, I turned down a pretty substantial amount of money not to do it. But looking back, it was such the right decision mm. to do because I would have been faking. I would have been on some bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? It yeah. was like, like when, uh, not, no offense to Usher, but like I remember seeing Usher at Coachella in a full leather fucking wrap. You know what I mean? Like looking like a fucking, I don't know what, but he looked like he was from Mad Max. Like fucking doing this, and I'm like, yo, didn't you do nice and slow? Like, aren't you the guy from fucking Atlanta? Like, what the fuck are you doing, looking like a goddamn cyborg? It, it just, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like, it's like, and again, no offense. Like, what, what I'm saying is, I've watched a lot of producers and a lot of people not stick to their guns and go out and do some wild ass project that 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 isn't them, and then all of a sudden nobody gives a shit anymore because that you can smell bullshit from fucking twenty miles away. Yeah. So sit down and do what you love. If you love to write on a guitar and you're a DJ, don't think anybody's ever gonna play your music. Someday someone will if it's good enough and you love it enough. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And someday like the like like the 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 last thing I'm gonna say is on this is that I finally did finish an album for myself that I love. I wow. fucking love it. There's not one dance song on it. And there's not one fucking like, you know what I mean? Like song that I wouldn't play over and over and over again. And I made it and I kept it next to my chest for two years, listening to it over and over and over again to make sure that those two years I would dislike the songs. I wasn't doing wow. something just genuine to my character. That's, that's and then really was, interesting. That's really interesting that you that you held on to it to see if it if it like if it the test, if it would last that time and still yeah. be relevant and still sound good. That's interesting. Yeah. And, wow. And right before right before this whole COVID shit, 
I did a deal that I can't talk about because it's fucking not quite dead yet, but it's about to be dead because of the time's about to run out. But I did the craziest fucking deal that, that, that you've ever seen in your entire life because of this record. 2020 was going to be a really, really big year. But someone finally understood it and they got it and they were like, whoa, dude, this is fucking levels up. And I was like, oh, thanks. Thank you for understanding. And, and when they understood, everybody else understood. And that satisfaction from doing what I wanted to do and having people understand was worth not getting paid in 2012 to make a fucking Avicii album. Mm. Because I'm not Avicii. Right. I'm somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So don't look at it as a day by day. Don't look at the failure as a fucking failure because you failed today. You know, fucking hold on to that motherfucker till 2050 and give it to your kid. If it's good, it's going to stay good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I love that. Yeah. White Shadow. Yo, I have. Uh, thanks so much for sitting with us and, and doing this. I hope it was. There wasn't too many redundant questions in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I was going to ask. I was going to ask real quick. Uh, have you yeah. thought about like teaching people how to write music or write a song or production? Like have a master class? Any yeah, like a master like, class seminar. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you asking for yourself? Or you yes, asking? yes, motherfucker. I'm trying to be the next white shadow, yeah. the brown shadow. <laughs> I just think it's it's mad, like uh, informative and kind of cool, like coming somebody like from you who's done the Gaga shit and won the Grammys and shit. Like it's just it's different. It's Damn. different because no, I'll, I'll tell you this, man. Two things on that. One, I don't really look at myself the way that you just said. I, look, that Grammy is still in the fucking box. All my plaques are in boxes. I, I, I love the Gaga shit. I'm so fucking proud of it. But I'm not. I, I don't even give a shit about any of that shit. I, I know that what I'm doing tomorrow is is what's important, right? I know sometimes I talk and people listen, but I will punctuate that with saying that everybody's got their own journey. What I do doesn't necessarily work for people, but like. Any time, and I think that like that you could probably find a, a number of motherfuckers that would tell you this. I'm open, bro. Like people can hit me, be like, "Yo, listen to this song." I'll tell you if it's a piece of shit. I'll tell you if it's good. I'll tell you what parts are good or what what parts aren't good. I'll mm -hmm. tell you like how I feel about things, and I could be wrong. But like, if you want advice from me, bet. Right now, in my mind, I don't want to sit down and do a master class because I'm still learning. You know what I mean? Like, but, 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 but I, I'm not saying it to be like stingy. I'm saying, because like, I, I keep myself open, like to other people's shit. Like I, I like to talk. I like to encourage people and, and, and try and be a light of, of positivity for motherfuckers. Um, but, but like my, my experience with teaching, uh, I went to school to be a teacher. That's why I went for creative writing. I was a teacher in, in, in college and um, I love teaching, but like right now, Sometimes I don't, I don't feel like I'm in a position that I'm, co I'm confident enough. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, like, like you feel, feel like, like you have I not learned. Well, do you, you haven't to go got to, to the place that you want to be to teach others. Got it. You, you also, I want to go to class. You, you've worked with so many, uh, you work with a lot of artists and probably be, you're probably around a lot of prestigious producers, musicians, actors, entertainers. Do you ever get like, um, what is it called? Like imposter syndrome? Do you know what I mean? Where you feel like you're not worthy to be in the circle of, of people that you're in. Do you know, like, where you feel kind uh, of yeah, like? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what that what if that's called imposter syndrome, yeah. but like, there hasn't been a day I mean, of my life that's gone by that I, that I feel worthy to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. in, in <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's 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 a horrible it's a horrible name. I think I I might be saying it wrong. I'm a Google it, but I feel like it's called imposter syndrome where you feel where you're in a situ where you're in a position and you're in a certain surroundings or you've earned, you maybe made it to a certain level and you just don't believe in yourself. You're like, I can't, I, I don't deserve to no. be here. You know what I mean? It's just another interesting mindset that, that I have changed in the last three years. I went from thinking that the, that the music that I was putting out was the product. My, my, my DJ set was the product. My app was the product or whatever is the product. And I, I changed my mindset to, to thinking that I'm the product. Paul Blair is the product. Like Paul Blair could be in fucking Taiwan or fucking Texas or whatever. And Paul Blair is still the product. Mm. So like what my collection of experiences and the way that I choose to express them, whether it's visually or audibly or, or written come from me, I'm the product. Right. So like, so like 
that has offered a ton of relief, but you know, in, in a way where I'm like not trying to chase anybody or anything. So when I show up to DJ now, it's like, I don't need to go and play bod body fucking body, 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 because like really fuck that song. Right. Like, I mean, like, I don't give a shit about that song. So it's like, I'd rather go play you a little bit of Luther Vandross because I actually like that song. So I'm going to stand up there and play what I like. And if you like it, great. If you don't fuck yourself and, and, and don't hire me next time. So like that, that to me is like allow me a bit of freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with writing. Like I'm not, you're not going to call me in for a chief Keith session. I love chief Keith, but I'm not going to go in and write a record with them because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, if you want me to, if you want me to fucking do some like eighties electro shit or some fucking dark pop stuff or some, um, you know, disco shit. Like I got that on lock. I got it all day. I know exactly what it is and I'll come in and I'll do that for you and we'll keep it moving, you know? Right. So it's like, it, 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 it's more of a focus on like who you are as a person and not trying to be somebody else as a person. Yeah. And then number two, I find when you do that and you're true to yourself, things just start happening where you're like, Oh, I'm always like, how the fuck did I get here? How am I here? And then you start to realize that like, Maybe you are good at what you do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you are maybe you are good at what you do. Because I think there's a fine line between telling people that you're good at what you do, because I don't always feel like I'm good at what I do. But some days I feel like I'm I am really good at what I do, but like like I never have an ego. Like I never am so much of an asshole that like it's gotta be my way or the highway. You gotta listen to everybody. You got to listen to the universe and you got to pay attention to where you're at and, and what other people's emotions are. And then, but you have to be confident in yourself. And, and, and that comes just from like doing it over and over and over again. And I'm going to end with this story and you're not going to believe it because I barely believe it. <laughs> I was walking yesterday, a, a mere hundred yards from where we're walking right now or where we're sitting, I'm sitting right now. And <laughs> Andre 3000 popped out of the fucking bushes at me. <laughs> we met, we met like this in the middle of the fucking road. This actually and happened. I, I shit you not on my fucking children. We have a flute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh, yes. he, he's walking, he's walking on the road. He's playing his piccolo. And I said, Hey man, I said, I just wanted to tell you that I'm, I, I produce music. I'm a DJ. I produce music for a living. And honestly, of every person in the whole entire music business that I've ever wanted to meet, you are the guy. Mm. I said, I drove three and a half hours in 1995 when I was in high school to fucking see you in a gym in Kalamazoo, Michigan with 50 people. Because when I heard Southern Playlist, like, I went absolutely insane. And I said, I think that as far as hip hop goes, and this is true that outcast is the most perfect group starting a record, ending a record, every song on a fucking record, one mm -hmm. back to back, like no misses, like zero misses. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and they did it for like fucking six albums. And I'm like, I just want to tell you, I don't know what you're doing now, uh, but or how you feel about life right now. But like, I need to tell you that I think that you're the greatest of all time. And, and thank you so much. And if I can ever do anything to repay you, I would gladly do it call me whenever fucking find me on whatever and tell me what it is amazing and so we walked away from each other like that two hours later i'm sitting at a restaurant not that much further from where i because it's all kind of one thing and he sat next to me and we talked for three and a half hours wow just chopped it up about whatever and i'm like this dude is this is insane that somehow i've gone from a fucking 14 year old punk fuck that was listening to fucking Southern Playlist to Cadillac music to talking to this guy like a peer and like somebody who can actually have some point of view. I have to be doing something right at some point when I could talk to somebody that I admire this yeah. much for this long. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what it is. Uh, it definitely wasn't my choice of attire. Um, so <laughs> whatever, you know, <laughs> uh, but oh man, yeah, that's, man, that's, I, that's 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 insane. To, to yeah. be honest, uh, yo, just for a little reference, imposter syndrome. Just so I want to make sure I wasn't saying. Oh, you googled it? You yeah, googled I googled it. it. <laughs> <laughs> a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their skills, talents, or accomplishments, 
and has a persistent uh, internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Um, uh, I don't that. ever feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 you could put me in a room like you could put me in a room with fucking Hans Zimmer and I'll fucking, I'll produce right in front of that motherfucker. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, like honestly, like, like there was a time where, you know, I was like a little bit like, Oh, what happens if I run into this guy? But like, I, you know, I was just, I was down in fucking Miami and Emilio Esteban studio talking to him about shit. Like I, I, I I'm, confident yeah. and i and i can i can pull my computer out in two seconds and make something right in front of you know bang for a month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I, i'm good it's funny when i when i started uh when i started getting into fashion or like streetwear and i was like making manufacturing and doing all of this shit from scratch i probably had a little bit of imposter syndrome when sure. i would, when i would be around all the designers and shit like that but then after a while you'd have conversations and some of them were never really even that hands-on on a lot of shit you know, and and some of them were just and, and I was shocked and I was like, oh, shit, like, you know, some of these dudes are more of an imposter than I am. They don't know shit. And uh, yeah, and I've only been in this shit for like two, three years. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've definitely had that syndrome once uh, once or twice in my life or even more than that. Yeah, a, I think it's a very natural feeling. Yeah. And I think the lesson to be learned is like like here is like everybody has their own shit going on inside of them. And if you're attuned to everybody um, a little less than you're attuned to yourself, everything's going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Definitely me. Hey, yo, White Shadow, before we end this, I have two just random questions that I, I would, if you, can, if you have an answer for them. One. Go for it. There was, I remember back in the day, your laptop got stolen at, a, at some yeah, event. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> it was a lady, yeah. what is it, a Lady Gaga after party or something? What was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. It was like fifty. Was, they said it was fifteen thousand dollars worth of shit, right? Or yeah, because I had my fucking Rolex in the bag. I fucking took my watch off when I was DJing, and my fucking Rolex was in my bag with my hard drives with the whole Art Pop oh, album shit. on it and my fucking laptop. So somebody took my Toomey backpack, which wasn't even that expensive of a backpack. But I'll explain why. These fucking paparazzi were outside, and I had to carry somebody who was drunk as fuck out and put him in a car. And they blocked off the car with another car. And so the paparazzi got mad that they couldn't take a picture of this person. And so when the car pulled off, I'm standing there by myself. And this fucking paparazzi guy called me. And I dropped my bag and I ran over to beat the fuck out of him. And when I was chasing his ass, I'm trying chasing his ass down the street. I put my backpack down and my fucking boy who was with me, I said, oh, watch my fucking backpack. He started chasing me. So he left my backpack on the curb, uh, and somebody came and took my backpack right off the curb. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing following me, man? I was about to beat this dude's ass. Fucking get my backpack, and and, and it's gone. So yes, I lost fucking my Rolex and a, you and never, a, you never got it back. No, and here's the here's the joy of that. Here's the joy of that. <laughs> I had the fucking whole album on that fucking computer, so I was just sitting there praying. I didn't give a fuck about anything else. I mean. I think I got back like fucking three grand. Like they don't give you shit back. Insurance gives you nothing back when you lose your shit. Mm -hmm. But like, um, uh, so I didn't even care about that. I was on the internet every day for like 300 days looking to make sure that nothing leaked off my computer and fucking God in heaven, nothing leaked. Oh my God. Wow. God damn. Yeah. Crazy. They, yeah. They, the motherfucker who took your back definitely didn't know whose back they took. They no, <laughs> no. <laughs> they, probably, they probably threw the fucking hard drives away and just kept the Rolex. Exactly, that's man. Yeah, that's probably what happened. You know what's the yeah. sad? You know what's the saddest shit that could happen is if if they wiped that hard drive clean and just started saving like their family pictures in that. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's used no, for the internet. I hope, I hope they did. I hope they did. Um, I hope they did. All the records came out, so we're we're good now. Yeah. But like, yeah. Here's a, here's a second question, and it's about the R. Kelly, What You Want. Because I actually yep. really love that song. And Tell me about it. It's my, great, it's my greatest accomplishment today. <laughs> <that fucking song. laughs> so I really love that song. But obviously, it was removed, right, from streaming platforms because of R. Kelly and yeah. his, his nasty ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I was just, and but you put that whole shit together, right, pretty much, that... Yeah, little known fact that Rick Ross was also on that song. Oh shit, really? There's a, there was a remix with Rick Ross, Rick Ross, Gaga, and R. Kelly. Yeah, it was. It's the greatest thing. Ever. That Rick. That here's a little known fact. That beat was a fucking Ch Chami 
I knew Chami before if Chami was Chami. He's fucking Martin. He was DJ, he was producing shit for a bunch of people, DJ Snake being one of them. Mm -hmm. And so I went to I was in France with Snake and and Martin. He wasn't called Chami then. And fucking uh I, he played me this fucking Chris Brown remix that got turned down. So the beat for Do What You Want, well a shell of the beat, was originally a fucking Chris Brown remix that got turned down from Martin. And so, so I was like, yo, this beat is fire. Let me fucking take it and like re rework it. So I took it, reworked it. We wrote that fucking song. She wrote the, the, the first, the pre and the, the, whole, the whole song. We wrote it together on the bus or whatever. And then when it was done, I was like, you know, it would be fucking dope on this R. Kelly. And she was like, that sounds killer. Let's try it. So I shot it off to fucking Rob, gave it back to me the next day. Next day, really, and, and he thought it was a remix. He thought it was a re. He thought I was asking him to give to do a remix. He didn't even know the song was out. He just, uh, you know, just did it for me. And so I, I get it back, and he's like, "Sounds like a remix, yeah." All this stuff at the beginning, and I was like, "This isn't a remix," but it was so dope <laughs> that we got back to the studio, and I was like, "Yo, listen to this!" And everybody flipped out. I played it to Jimmy. Jimmy was like, "Yo, this is fire." I was like, "Dope." What do we do? And I was like, let's get Rick Ross on it. And they were like, you can't get Rick Ross on it for the regular record, but you can do it for the remix. So at like a dick, I put the remix out. There was just the DJ White Shadow remix. And it all that was different with the whole song was just I put Rick Ross at the beginning of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so and so anyway, yeah. It, I mean, to me, that that is one of my that is by far my favorite song. And to tell you that I was disappointed in the actions and the leading up actions. And just the whole entire situation and the muddiness and the weirdness of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah. they should have fucking, they, they I, you know, I don't know, man. It's, it's a shame that all of those things happened to those people. Yeah. It's a shame that, 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 that he perpetrated those acts against people. Um, you know, it's a very crazy thing to say now because it seems so obvious now. But to be honest with you, I was as dumb as everybody else was. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of that is just because nobody ever said shit. And I loved R. Kelly so much as an artist that I wasn't really paying attention. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so, so, you know, and I get it. They should, but it sucks that the art has to get taken down because of uh, acts of one guy that like whatever, but it is what it is. I wish that they would sell that thing for a million dollars and give the money away to the victim's families and take his, take his ass off. But, yeah. Maybe one day yeah. something will happen. I don't know. But I, as a song, it's my favorite song that we've ever written. It's one of my favorite songs. It reminded me of uh, Madonna Isla Bonita, right? That joint, it well, just had that, that, that vibe to it, and I loved it. Yo, you know? yo that changed that, that, dude, that. I'm not trying to be an asshole here, but when we did that and it came out, it was the fastest selling, it was the fastest selling song on iTunes to date. It sold faster than any other song. Oh, I just really? think it did a hundred. Yeah, it did like a hundred thousand copies in less than a minute when it fucking dropped because they put it on a Beats commercial. And then it was the only song in the history of iTunes, I think, to get to the top ten without a video. There was no video for it. And then they pulled it because of some fucking dumb shit like politics before even the R. Kelly thing happened. Something else happened, and there was another fucking record that needed to come out. We mesh mash times, and then whatever. I don't know how it all works, but you you lose control of your art after you put it out. So I, I'm not sure what happened, but I was bummed out that it got stopped early. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you know, once all this this shit happened, it's like you put your all your soul into something, and somebody else can can totally fuck it up which is like one of those things too that like you don't think of when you're a producer it's like you don't interview every motherfucker for their background or you did it you know but like sometimes now like i'll get in the studio with people and i think they're wild and i'm like fuck i, I don't want to i don't want to really do anything because i don't want to fucking ruin this you know what i mean like it's <laughs> it's crazy yeah mm -hmm. risky I don't know. I Fucking thought, weird, weird, weird world we live in, boys. Weird yeah, world. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Well, now you and Andre are going to make some better work, so you'll be all right. That'd be amazing. You know what? I, I, I called my brother and I was like, if I'm dead tomorrow, you know, just know that I've accomplished everything I wanted to in life after I took that fucking three hour sit down with Andre yesterday. <laughs> I'm done. 
finished. What did he but order? Now, what did he order, by the way? What did he order? Yeah, what was his order? <laughs> <laughs> is he like flat water type of guy? It's more like I, know, it's just like anamame and something weird, right? Like like, like a vegan, like yeah. <laughs> do you do you little candles you. around you guys. What's going I'm on? I'm gonna tell you that I must have got you. They they could have fucking set off a nuclear bomb twenty feet from my sick chair, and I wouldn't have noticed only because I was so out of my mind that I was sitting there having an open conversation with Andre 3000. I don't know if you ordered anything. I don't know if I got butt fucked while I was talking to him. I don't know what happened. I was like in my mind, like, holy shit, I'm sitting here talking to Andre. And it was awesome. So I was really happy about it. Yeah, Yeah, man. Anyway. White Shadow, thanks a lot for sitting with us and coming on the podcast. Shout to Phenom for setting it up too. And reaching yeah, out, man. Uh, shout to Beat Source and DJ City. So if you want to watch this episode on YouTube or view some of our older episodes as well, you can go to youtube.com slash road podcasts, like, comment, subscribe. We post new episodes every Thursday, every Thursday, y'all, without fail. So definitely come check out the new episodes on YouTube on Thursdays. And on Fridays on YouTube, we've been posting our older Sunday battles from Twitch. So Jamie and I have been working really hard to get these older battles on YouTube for you guys to watch. So every Friday, you can check these older battles on YouTube. And you can also check the newer battles on Sundays at twitch.tv slash roadpodcast. Make sure to follow us on Twitch and uh, subscribe if you can. We just started a new Tuesday on Twitch as well called Road Tuesdays. Basically, everyone in the crew alternates every week. You could check Never One Week, Jamie One Week, D Miles the next week, and myself the next week. Hopefully, you know, we'll start incorporating some of the homies and have them do some guest spots as well on Tuesdays. So definitely check that out, twitch.tv slash roadpodcast. And, um... And then, yeah, White, right. White Shadow, thanks again, man. Appreciate it, man. No problem, guys. All Thank right, you. Bye, right, bro. Peace, Peace out. Right. Talk Peace. To you. Peace. Bye.